Curtis Mathis Mega Combo TV Stereo Record Player Vintage Old Antique In this video we're going to get the television part working in a previous video we got the FM radio and the multiplex working. The CRT on this has been necked. The neck is broken off. It's gone to air. So I'm going to pull the CRT out and I have a used one a friend gave me out of a CTC38 that we're going to pop in here. We'll test it and then we'll just get it mounted in here so I can get this old one out of here. Um, Usually when you change a CRT you lay the set on its face and with the design of this I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. Not that I'm really worried about keeping it all pretty in that. I mean it, it's it's pretty bad. But yeah I need to get it off the dolly here. I have it on a dolly so I can roll it around and it's actually I think it's starting to sag on the sides so let me see how I can figure out how to lay this thing face down um, this thing is not easy to work with I guess if you were in a carpeted ballroom or something it'd be easy to work on but you know with uh, 10,000 square feet it's uh, kinda tight Okay, this is my idea to protect the lustrous finish of this beauty. Wouldn't want anything to happen to such a fine specimen. Hey, let's see what we got here. Now this this was basically a RCA clone. We got our yoke. Uh, blue lateral magnet. Is this is this any good? This ooh, this might not be any good. I have to take a look at that. Make sure the magnets are still in it. Looks like it's looks like this is a magnet and it's broken. Um, convergence assembly. So, let's pull it out. This is actually a Dunbar. Dunbar was our crappy rebuilder in Los Angeles here. Wow, imagine that. Has a straight gun and requires no ion trap. So it's out. I'm just no no risk of this one imploding okay here's a replacement this came out of a CTC 38 and it's a Zenith Cinebeam I wonder if this is any good I wonder if this is a actual Zenith tube Grade A, used glass envelope, new or used shadow mask, all other components are new. You made from used materials, reused. Let's test it. I'm going to, planning on disposing of this combo unit after it's done with its little uh, entertainment session so maybe I want to put a different CRT in it if this one's really good. The Zenith Cinebeam is in excellent condition. I don't want to put this CRT in this set. I'm gonna have to find a different CRT. I'm not gonna sacrifice a tube that's this strong this is a late 1960s Packard Bell, probably made right here in Los Angeles. Of course it was. Packard Bell was L.A. And it's on our robo-tweebulator base. Roto-tweebulator base. For your viewing convenience. And look at the red, blue, and green 
Roto Tweebulator number two. So I think what we're going to do, says the ICP button, which is uh, degaussing, manual degaussing. We're going to pull this CRT and put it in the uh, Curtis Mathis rave set. But let's fire this up. I checked the CRT. It's fair. It's in that okay range. wonder what the point of this is. Anyway... Looks like someone stole the... Gotta love those germanium diodes. Packard Bell was basically, their color stuff was basically a uh, RCA clone with kind of an older point-to-point -point Zenith style uh, construction. So this is off because I took this off to check the CRT. So yeah, it's all it's all point to point like with like Zenith with the little contact ties, solder pots. But this is RCA, the circuitry is RCA. So it's basically RCA built like a Zenith. Jeez, man, I plugged it in. I swear it went up to 500 watts. Let me get the, this is a polarized plug. Let me get the right plug. Just cold turkey, brute force reform. Interesting thing is the filaments aren't, maybe the filaments are getting hot, except this, they're not getting hot. Did I put this back on the right way? There it goes. I hear the vertical. 302 watts of picture power. Think of that, that's all heat. The bottom line is 300 watts and it's all heat. That's the ICP. Boy, that is dim. No activity from the tuner. It is dim. Contrast. Pull on volume. Okay, well the power switch is broken. I think this thing is uh, destined to become a uh, bird cage or a humidor or a bank vault or a dog bed or cigar lounge or something. Yeah, I think this thing's spent. Wait, is there a vacuum bulb missing there? Second IF. No wonder why it's dead. Somebody scarfed some parts out of this because the blue lateral magnet is missing. 
So we need to get a 6DM6. 6GM6. Never even heard of a 6. GM6. No wonder why it's dead. It's got high voltage though. That's a good thing, right? I grabbed a 6JH6 out of uh, another TV. I hear the audio now. Most of those little seven pin tubes are kind of all the same. I don't want to say they're interchangeable, but they largely are. Hey, imagine that. Wow, it's picking up channel six without an antenna. That's pretty impressive. I put a clip lead on it. Sí, y buenas noches, queridos oyentes. Estamos, como tú bien decías, contentos y alegres. Es la noche en que la Virgen nos invita a caminar con ella, a caminar con ella buscando a ese Jesús, amor misericordioso. ¿Cómo te parece, cielo Nancy, que venimos haciendo un ciclo sobre la Divina Misericordia? Venimos haciendo un ciclo donde el Espíritu nos ha colocado no a revisar esto que hiciera, pues, cielo Nancy, como es nuestra costumbre, oración, clamemos el Espíritu Santo. Like the colors para working. Los y para los There it is in color, it all works. No sabemos exactamente qué tipo de vida llevaba, pero desde que estaba anunciado un castigo era porque no era una vida realmente ejemplar, sino por el contrario, habían cometido muchos desafueros, habían cometido I don't even care about it enough to uh, to hook the uh, converter box up to it because I'm just going to yank the CRT tomorrow for the Curtis Mathis. Maybe if the Curtis Mathis makes it back in one piece, I'll put the CRT back in here and I'll sell it as a working fish tank. This Packard Bell has to be one of the world's most serviceable color TVs. So two plugs and that comes off the yoke and convergence. Two plugs right here, the picture tube, uh, two screws, one right there and one right there, one down here at the bottom and this. Oh, stand by. These, these here are getting in the way. Try that again. Oh, 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 what are we hanging up? Oh, there's a, oh, there we go. And that just clinko twinkulates right up out of there. Like that. Except this could probably go on the other side, but. So the question is, can I get the CRT out of here with the chassis, or do I have to remove the chassis? This is a very, very nicely built TV. And yes, it's all point to point like a Zenith. Mostly good capacitors. These blue ones, these are just these blue ones are just paper inside of a plastic. Lots of capacitors though. And degrading wire. But yeah, this is a very well built TV. Construction wise. See what it takes to get the picture bulb out. Sure, if I can get it unscrewed, I can. This here is the automatic degaussing capacitor. I really appreciate how well built this Packard Bell is. Not that I'm specifically a fan of this, but so many of these TVs we see the front is plastic. Well, I guess it's plastic on this one also, but look at how they've. The picture tube is bolted to these metal brackets not just the plastic front. Anyway, it should be loose. Now, 
probably get some safety glasses and see if I can lift it out of there. Look at this. It's a checklist. This is a Packard Bell CRT. It's going into the Curtis Mathis Super Combo. And you can see here what I was talking about, about how this is plastic. And this doesn't have any reinforcements. It's just the CRT is bolting to the plastic. So Curtis Mathis definitely left the quality out. I mean, these were, these are probably some of the worst made sets out there. Here's how I install these. I put all of these in and I leave them loose. This is loose. Okay, I don't tighten them down all the way, they're just loose. And then what I do is I put the band around it. I tighten the band down while those are loose and then I go back and tighten those down, those ears. Yeah, you wanna, you know, make sure these are not too loose but basically just loose enough to where they can like slide and then tighten your band down safety goggles the whole time because it can blow up or implode or whatever it does but it sends glass all over the place and then we'll go back and tighten all these down he with two young children is ambitious to say the least then our check engine light came on we pulled into oran auto cars and they tested it turned out it was a faulty sensor they referred us to a great mechanic just down the street and we were back on the road in no time so this goes over the top of that and red is here green and blue is on top on this setup the yoke slides in and out for purity adjustment and then you have to tighten this bolt right here to hold it what's interesting about this is this CRT when it was in the Packard Bell didn't have purity magnets on it and I don't see the little nub inside there for the purity magnet. Uh, I, yeah, good question. We'll have to play with that when we do the setup. Gluing the base back together, the base had broken when we initially picked it up because there's so much flex in the middle. So polyurethane glue this will never come apart again on their medical professionals it's saturday september 14th at 10 a.m in their new flagship newport beach office enjoy pastries and mimosas and get personal to register call 800-866-2000 that's 800-866-2000 or go to liftyblush.com 800-866-2000 jeez my pelvic floor is going to need some work to get this going again this was the chassis to the Curtis Mathis, which it's just like a CTC something. CTC 25, CTC 35, CTC 17. It's just exactly like an RCA. In fact, I wonder if it's, this is not an RCA flyback though. Not at all. I have no idea what that socket is for. We got wires here. I have no idea what this is. I reconnected the IF wire. At least I believe that's what that was and that's where that goes. And then I hose the controls down with WD-40. I don't care enough about this to use my expensive contact cleaner on it. Try not to... stuff's getting hard to get. So I need to find a 6DW4 damper and a 6GH8 horizontal oscillator. What's interesting is the picture tube here either a roundy or a rectangular so does this not I mean I understand the same chassis will drive both picture tubes but does this not have the pin cushion stuff in it? Because the rectangular needs a pin cushion correction. Alright well I guess this was for the degaussing Scoily Spoimler. 
I don't know how I forgot about that. And then I did find a 6DW4 and a 6GH8. Now hopefully if this thing, am I plugging this into the right spot? Seems like it. Hopefully if there's no capacitor or other issues with this, this is the convergence. This one plugs in back here. Okay. There's not a whole lot to these things. This high voltage cap goes up here. Okay, let's power this up and see if we get high voltage. Why do we have 37 watts with it off? Power factor is one, so it's purely resistive, so it's got to have instant on. Why am I surprised? Why am I not surprised? And yes, it does have instant on. Here we go. Where is our horizontal output tube not getting hot? What's going on here? Why is the wattage dropping? Make sure we don't have any so, why is this sucker not getting, oh there it goes. That's too much. Hundred watts. Jeez, it went up a hundred watts. Let's try this again. Maybe that damper's bad. Yeah, that's way too much power and no high voltage. Okay, I don't know if this is the same. I put a six, oh, I think my cord there just clinko sninculated. Oh yeah, no good. Okay, here's the approved fix when your cord clinko sinculates. Here we go. I put a six CL3 in there. I hope that's close enough to a six DW4. Um, this chassis worked. There we go. 25 kilovolts and only 302, ooh, 310 watts. So this guy is bad. See what a bad damper tube will do? Bad damper tube would fry the whole damn thing. Oh, well that's happiness, kind of. Now this needs an absolute complete setup, which we'll do. Is the first thing I wanna do is I wanna cap this high voltage down a little bit. 28 kilovolts is kind of too much. Um, it increases the hell out of the X radiation, which I need to put the shield on there, but also cause the flyback to fail. Because if the high voltage is just, ooh, that's as low as it goes, that's all the way down. Okay, maybe the shunt tube's bad. If you just let the high voltage run away, um, 
it's not good for the flyback because it's more stress on the insulation. Okay, well, I was in here, the fine tuning gear was popped out of the front of the tuner. And I was in here screwing with it and now it's shorted. Now I, I give it power and this, it just, it's a short. It just, this beeps. Cause it's uh, something shorted. I don't know if it's the rectifier diodes. I don't know what it is, but it's just overloading the hell out of it, drawing 2000 watts. And so it's dead. I'm all set up to do a alignment setup, and it's dead. Well, look at this. No wonder why the circuit breaker didn't pop. I didn't do this. I, I don't even own electrical tape. Jeez. So, this is a mess. Um, let me check these rectifier diodes. Well, the first one is zero. Okay, that one looks like it checks okay. That one right there looks okay. And that one there is a dead short. Let me cut that one out first. Yeah, this one and this one are shorted. Probably because when I was moving the tuner, I touched this and it bumped into something and shorted out. So what I'm going to do, because I'm all set up here to do a setup on this. See, I'm all set up to do my setup is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tack a couple diodes in there right now. And we'll come back to this and fix this mess later. I can do that tomorrow. Man, it's getting dark out here. Okay, this is just a bridge rectifier. I just really tacked in there two, went in 4007. And I mean they're just tacked in there. Uh, I just really want to do the setup on this. You know, uh, I can come back to this. This is... Like I say, I didn't do this. I I don't bypass circuit breakers. If I do, I put a fuse. And I certainly don't even own electrical tape. So, yeah, something must have touched out here and it shorted for a brief minute. And instead of blowing the circuit breaker, it shorted the diodes because the circuit breakers bypassed. That's why you never bypass a circuit breaker. If there wasn't a uh, circuit breaker on the power strip, something would have caught fire. Okay, that's a lot better than 2,000 watts. Okay. Okay, this is what it looks like. Let's see what we can do. Colby Calais, and this is my dog Plum. Hi. She was tied up and starving on the streets before she was brought to a shelter, and I adopted her. Not all animals are as lucky as Plum. In fact, companion animals across the U.S. are in crisis. That's a collar. Here, nearly three million homeless animals collar are up. due to overcrowding and lack of resources to find them homes. They desperately need our help. That's why I've joined forces with the ASPCA, the nation's in animal protection for nearly 150 years. We invite you to join in a new national movement to help so that's what the color abandoned looks like. animals across the country. It's called Come to Their Rescue. Nothing compares to the feeling of knowing you've given an animal a second chance. Please join me and come to their rescue today. To learn how, go to ASPCA.org slash rescue. Life, <laughs> an everyday miracle of survival. Today, the future of all life on Earth hangs in the balance. What happens next depends on us. So this is what the picture looks like with absolutely no setup. Damn, you're free. I look into your heart and you find love, love, love. <laughs> so we're going to do the setup here. 
is going to be a long drawn out process. Oh yeah. Color down, color up. Color down, color up. That's the tint. Okay, this is, that's raster. Okay, that's red. That's green. That's blue. So, First thing we're going to do, we're going to put it on red. Real red, isn't it? First thing I'm going to do is purity setup. I'm going to turn the green screen down. Wow, the blue screen doesn't do anything. That's red. Might have a problem here. Okay, I'm going to pull the yoke back. Okay, I turned the generator off. Um, that's red screen up. Yoke back, yoke forward, yoke back. Now I'm going to try and Okay, the purity magnets are completely frozen. This thing is bad. Let me go dig one of these up. Okay, here's a new one. Not new, but whatever. I'll put it on. Okay, here we go with the new one. Wow, what a difference. Look how much brighter it is. So this is what you want to do. You want to bring your red dot into the middle. Okay. Now we're going to push the yoke back forward until it's all red.
Okay, that's about as good as I'm going to get it. It might clean up as I do the convergence. That's green. It's blue. Boy, blue is weak. This is CRT bias. Gives us quite a bit more. Got a loose connection. Okay. Convergence. I don't know what that is. Wow. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get red and green on top of each other as best we can. Don't really care about blue. Going for in the middle. And it's so bad, it's almost like the convergence isn't working. It's so bad around the outside that it's like the convergence assembly is just not working. Okay, now let's add the blue in. Remember, we can move blue wherever we want. Look at the arc. Can move blue both left and right and up and down. Wow. Wow, is that bad? Maybe that diode on the convergence, that selenium diode. Because if you're looking at from the front, blue is just like arced. Maybe the clover leaf is bad. Something's bad. All I'm going to do is bring it around my neck with the knots in the back and loop it twice around. There you go. Fantastic look. For more beauty and fashion tips, watch Mirror Mirror on the Live Well Network. 
Now on to the fillings. Thought I'd start with the uh, pork filling, pork and red chili. I bought this kind of pork, like the kind of pork that you would use for pork stew, or you could get something cut from the shoulder. And then I'm going to simmer it in a mixture of chili powder and water. I'm going to start with a measured amount of three cups of water. And to that, I'm going to add a third of a cup of chili powder. Now, this chili powder is without salt, and it's just really full of chili flavor. Adding a third of a cup of it there, I need to add uh, salt, and then whisk that to it, just to make sure that all the chili powder. I'm going to put the pork in there, and then turn the fire on. Now, when that pork is fall apart tender, you may need to use a fork into smaller pieces. They mix together some of that corn masa, the same stuff that we use to make the tamales, with a little bit of water. Then strain it into the mixture, whisking it until it comes back to a boil. That'll thicken up those beautiful juices that you've created there. Now, time to soak, rehydrate. Today more than ever before. Hi, I'm Dana Lash from The Dana Show, and I want to tell you about a really simple thing you can do that helps promote more energy and supports healthy blood pressure levels. This is Super Beats, and I swear by it. It gives me more healthy energy to keep up with my hectic schedule, and you're going to love what it does for you, too. I can definitely use a little more energy, especially if it's from a natural source like beets. If I had something natural and healthy that gave me energy, I'd be all in. Beets contain an essential nutrient that makes them one of the most heart-healthy vegetables in nature. Super Beets concentrates that nutrient into superfood crystals. Super Beets contains real food that helps increase circulation to get flow throughout the body naturally, blood pressure, and gives you healthy energy to make the most of your day. Find out how to get a free canister with your first order, plus bonus gifts. Call 1-800-616-7620 or go to trysuperbeats.com. I just mix a teaspoon into a few ounces of water. There's the natural apple flavor or black cherry flavor. It tastes great. It's really yummy. It's good flavor. I'm surprised. It doesn't taste like beets at all. I'll finish this, by the way. What if you had more energy? Imagine the possibilities. You feel strong and you feel healthy and you feel like you could accomplish anything. If I'm doing the things that I do, I feel better, not only physically, but mentally. So do something good for your heart, your circulation, your blood pressure, and your energy. You'll love Super Beats or your money back. Call now and find out how to get a free canister with your first order, plus free indicator strips that show how it's working. And shipping is free, too. This Super Beats offer isn't available in stores, so call or go online right now. Super Beats from Human. Order your Super Beats today. Call 1-800-616-7620 or visit trysuperbeats.com. feel bad if I coach car, but you had no choice. You lawyer it up. He was trying to take the boys living in his house. Yeah, hard to know what else he could have done. Coach, Carl, I just, I just... For a nightly play.
plays the real-life whistleblower who exposed illegal U.S. government secrets before the invasion of Iraq. Something's way off. We need to know all about your love life. Monday on ET. We are almost out of time. Bye for all the late breaking Hollywood news. Just go to etonline.com. That's it for me in New York. Take it away, Nichelle. All right, Kel, I got it. Now we're going to leave you with a good one. Miss Taylor, her video, her lover. She's had a really big week. It's racked up around 40 million YouTube views and counting. And her album of the same name became Taylor's sixth. But enjoy this video and the rest of your weekend, everybody. Bye-bye. Ever since I had my own, you know. <laughs> I've always believed that food can connect everyone. Awesome.
This is so light and fresh, I gotta have the recipe. You wanna grow some of the foods you eat. All you have to do is drop and grow. But what makes it even sweeter is being able to share the bounty with others. Making connections from garden to table on Create. I love this kind of cooking. The amount of flavor for five ingredients is phenomenal. I would eat it for lunch. It's fantastic. I would eat it for dinner. No apologies on flavor. Loads of it. And I would eat it for breakfast. <laughs> it's so good. Quick and easy to do. It gets you endorphins going. Oh, 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 oh. It's a different philosophy of cooking. Once you've tried it, you want it in the back. Woohoo! Mm. And that, my friends, is a beautiful thing. Get enough create you can go online the to blue is so far off books, dvds and more from your favorite create host look at how far off the blue is travel cook. here's a look at the path right now so you can see dorian is a low pressure system and then the winds will continue to decrease as it uh, makes its way more to the north and then we're going to set this in motion for you so you can see it's still bringing a lot of rain to the area to areas like nova scotia and then it's going to continue to push out so uh, here in the united states it is no longer affecting us that it could bring more of the st strong storm surges also to East Canada but again doesn't have that well-defined eye so that is why it's called a post tropical cyclone otherwise back here in Southern California as I mentioned it is starting to feel back to normal temperatures getting closer to normal we topped out at 89 degrees this afternoon 84 is our average and then as we head into later tonight it's still pretty warm outside look we still have temperatures in the 80s for the valleys and also for the Inland Empire we have low 70s for the beaches so it's still nice and comfortable 75 the winds are busting up up in the mountains so we're looking at those temperatures going down to about upper 50s tonight we have this wind advisory for our desert communities the high deserts and the low deserts all the areas here in brown and that means we're going to continue to see these winds gusting up as the low pressure system to us gets a look closer just to the north it's going to brush past Here's what I've done I went through and I marked all of these that are having no effect with blue so this one so this one that coil that coil and that coil and the smaller coil here says blue shape see that blue shape so that's and this that thing right there that little box is a diode uh, pack so let's do convergence repair Okay, well, the next day, sometimes when you get stuck on something, it's always good to sleep on it. Let's kind of recap where we ended up with this. So last night, when I was trying to do the convergence setup, we had the blue lines just bent. And the reason for that was, and I kind of discovered it on accident, I had this flipped. So I had the red on this side. The red, red... Uh, is on the right side when you're looking at it from the back so I screwed that up uh, this was bad actually this one was bad and it's just all corroded and you can't really move these and the magnets are jacked up earlier in the video this was screwed up but I thought I'd fix that anyway yeah these purity uh, magnets they do go bad these lateral and purity magnets so those do go bad and I went through and I checked this diode I pulled a bunch of stuff I checked all the coils I checked all the pots they're all good everything on this board is good now also to just kind of jump around here the uh, fine-tuning gear down here is broken it's just the plastic is disintegrating so that's a real issue with this set to not have fine-tuning I mean you could kind of get it you know where you want it but if you change to a different uh, converter box or satellite or whatever so that's probably why I had previously disconnected the IF and used the IF input so the tuner is a problem this wire right here broke off, which is no big deal. I'll solder that back on. Um, 
things just been abused it's falling apart so here's what I screwed up what we need to do today this this coil right here I had gone through and marked the coils that I didn't see making a difference well one reason they weren't making a difference is because I had the cloverleaf flipped over and the other reason why is this one is not supposed to make a difference this is you adjust this with the scope and yes I do make mistakes and no I don't cover them up I don't work on this stuff every day so it's easy to make mistakes so basically what we want to do is we want to align that coil or we want to adjust that coil which they call and I know this is microscopic the blue uh, blue horizontal shaping coil we want to adjust it on the scope to look like that now I started doing some research on how to properly do convergence and if you ever wanted a book on RCA this is the book right here on early RCA stuff this is the book and he has a different way of doing it than the SAMS he talks about as far as the dynamic convergence you go through and you set up you do it by turning colors off so you go through and you do the center convergence and you turn the blue off and then you converge the red and green and then you go through and you turn the green the turn the blue on and the green off so I went through and I uh, numbered them this is I enlarged this on the copier and then I numbered them so this is his way of doing it and this is the SAMS PhotoFact way of doing it and SAMS is a little bit different it, they're basically sort of reversed from each other which it probably really wouldn't matter he probably just reversed them to stay out of SAMS copyright or something this set is a RCA CTC 17 clone as far as I can this book has all the schematics and stuff in it so if we look at a CTC 17 CTC 17 is the same circuit I mean I guess that's what they want I got it adjusted as close to that as I can it's and this one's getting real hot but that one looks like it's always gotten real hot. You can see it's all baked. So I noticed the wattage draw was a little high. It should be around 300. So I decided to check the cathode current. Yeah, it's a little bit high. Uh, 220 is the max. So I'm going to try and electrocute myself and tweak the... Um, the uh, linearity coil here. We'll see if we could get it down. Oh. Jeez. Uh, that made a difference of 20 watts. That, that tube will probably be happy. Jeez. See, it was up here, like, right there before. Look at that. 32 watts. Okay, I'm going to bring it down. Eighteen watts. That should make that tube a lot happier. And actually, I really need to do this with a signal, so let me get the generator because the horizontal frequency will probably change when I put a signal to it. Something's drifting like crazy here because as this warms up, it keeps changing. And I have a feeling it's those capacitors right there. Okay, check this out. I've let it cool down for 30 minutes.
340 watts 350 watts almost 300 milliamps a cathode current that doesn't sound like huge but it is because it's at 450 volts so 80 milliamps at 450 volts I mean you can see the difference here it's we're driving an extra 40 watts into those tubes so I gotta try I gotta change the caps this thing's turning into a real nightmare money pit but that needs to be stable and I've seen those caps that are connected to the horizontal efficiency coil short before yeah, this thing's turning into a money pit piece of trash only you know it only needs to run two or three nights all right what I've done is I've lifted the chassis up here and I turned it on and I adjusted the cathode current for minimum and I've let it warm up for a while and now those capacitors are up under here right there I'm going to spray them with a little freeze spray and let's see what happens okay here we go this is not uh, ideal is it can I even get to them Ooh. Come on, this is not happy, is it? I cannot get to them. This is a problem with RCA, man. You know, Zenith was so much better at this. Ooh, it didn't make a difference. That's not good. Let me try spraying the coil itself. that's adjusting the coil okay so what's wrong here crap what a time suck this thing is pretty hideous isn't it so like I said this thing only needs to run for two nights and it's destined for the scrap yard I'm gonna pull the pull these out when I'm done we'll see if this fixes it though I'm curious well, something went wrong there. Okay. Right at 200 milliamps, 304, 305 watts. Uh, let's let it run for a while and see what happens. If it's stable, the capacitors were bad. Nope, it wasn't the capacitors. It's creeping up. Maybe it's a horizontal output tube. I'm watching this it's not changing I changed the damper and the horizontal output twice it's still creeping up as it drifts I can bring it down with the horizontal efficiency coil I mean I could just let it uh, but see then when you first turn it on it's drawing a ton of current it should be stable and it's not it's very unstable and it's pro it's a problem but it doesn't appear to be on the drive. It appears to be something with the tuning. I don't know if this is possible, but it seems to almost be the efficiency coil itself. Because if I spray the efficiency coil, the current draw goes, changes. And that efficiency coil is getting hot. That one right there. It's almost like that coil is bad, although I don't see how that's possible. Okay, I changed the efficiency coil. 
and let's see what happens here. It, sh it should drift very little. Very, very little. I changed to the digital meter. Seems like it's dropping. My local meta spa, they said, oh, we can fix it with this. We can fix it with that. I did lasers. I did treatments. They rolled things on me and heated things up and pulled things Ooh. off. And it would last, I'm not kidding, for a few days. Really? And it's hundreds of dollars, sometimes yeah. thousands of dollars. There's nothing you can do. I mean, it's a part of getting older. And I think that I started to surrender and then Crepe Race came along. Well, you know, I had... Okay, I... Uh... I don't know what's up with this. I'm not going to spend any more time on it. Like I said, this set only has to run two nights. Um, it's drifting with that coil too. You know, that coil's getting very hot. And I don't know if they're supposed to get very hot. I mean, like, very hot. And maybe it's just a function of it overheating because there's something else wrong that's causing it to crepe out and just want to be erased but I don't know I'm not gonna spend any more time on it um, I'm gonna put the old one back in I'm gonna let it heat up I'm gonna adjust it to 220 milliamps hot and I'm gonna leave it I put the old coil back in and I installed a cathode test point so I could take my socket out and I adjusted it so it's after been on, it's been on an hour. It's at 215 milliamps. So you know what? I'm done with it. That's it. I'm not going to do any more. 309 watts. It's a lot better than the 360 or whatever it was yesterday. So here's the learning thing here. Adjust your TV's cathode current actually after it's fully warmed up. When it gets dark enough out here, I'm going to try and converge it using this book. I'm going to try these instructions. And yeah, I've charted it all out. And yeah, I'm going to follow this. And, and, and they talk about of course you got to start with the purity in that I got to do all that again and then uh, they actually have you turning the blue on and the green off and then the uh, turn blue on with green off turn blue on and green off so you, you kind of yeah this is I think this is a little bit better of a way and they say try and converge out to here don't even worry about this from here on out you're just trying to get this area in here converged he says in here there's no point in even trying to get it all the way to the edge okay I followed these instructions I've been doing it for about an hour and I got it really good and it, it, it for what it is I could go over it a few more times and probably get it better it seems to drift around a little bit. I notice the blue is starting to drop. It's starting to move around as it warms up, but it's... Yeah, I think it's about as good as I'm going to get it. As I care to get it. Yeah, it is moving around a little bit. It was almost perfect. Um, you got to follow the instructions. It just kind of comes together when you follow the instructions, the way the things interact. It's really decent now. It's not great, but this CRT wasn't in great shape. That's why I picked it. The seven passenger Infiniti QX60 luxury should be left in. Lease the Infiniti QX60 for three ninety nine a month. Visit your Southern California Infiniti retailer. It's not great, but... Aerodactyl. USC professors discovered the fossils and other material of the giant flying reptile that once flew in the skies over North America at a site in Alberta, Canada. The fossil... Cathode currents running right at 201, 202, which is decent. Yeah, about 35 feet for the larger back. 
You can see the fossils in person if you like. You need to see him again. Manny and his mom used to come to these monthly meetings at UCI for Spanish-speaking families with kids with autism. Yeah, actually a month ago I was here taking care of I love the Manny Greens. Started the support group RCA Their son, like always Manny, has the best the Greens. They were stunned hearing Manny had died. It was Manny, but it could have been my son. The school district released a statement detailing what their security cameras showed happened Monday at El Modena High School. We want accountability. We want the truth to come out. Manny was 15, but due to autism... Nine at Carl's Jr. It's on! The Ross Ball... You can't always react to everything that's in front of you. That's why the 2019 Nissan Kicks. So there's some ringing on the left the here. Stop. Tech that Honda HRV and Kia Soul don't have. It could be a resistor in the yoke or your local Nissan store. Store, huh? Nine percent financing for up to 36 months, or save up to 1,500 on the 2019 Kicks. Dave Maggio here with a look at sports. Oh, and it's a big...